Hello everyone, my name is Yuki. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Anthropology. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a simplified structural analysis custom block. In today's On Top Live, I will set up a single loading structural analysis and package that workflow into a custom block that can be reused for other parts. Today I'm going to work on this car suspension. Um, before I start, I want to credit Lano Kuyama for this awesome car suspension design I downloaded from GrabCAD to use in today's On Top Live. So taking a first look at this assembly, this assembly is made up of a lot of components. But today we're only going to focus on these four parts, or as we like to call them, the control arms. So what I want to do is I want to create a simple structural analysis with one loading and support. And I want to create a reusable workflow out of it because I want to also simulate those other control arms without the need of creating the entire workflow again. So I'm going to isolate this part over here. We'll start with this part. I like to, I call this the upper control arm. And you can create the CAD body variable here, or you can also convert the CAD body to implicit body, which is our format, native format in on top. So I'm going to isolate that part. I'm going to zoom in real quick. So in the, in the structural analysis, you first have to mesh the part. You also want to define a material, define your boundary conditions, your force and your supports in our case, and then put it on to static analysis. So for the boundary conditions, I also selected those faces that we we're going to use out of the part. And I will cover that later as we go, as we go through each of the blocks. So first, I usually like to mesh my part. I think that's like standard steps in what I like to take when I first start my static analysis. So first I used mesh to mesh from CAD body and my meshes are somewhat coarse. So I wanted to remesh the surface, make it cleaner. So I now have nicer elements and nodes throughout the whole part. And on top does a really quick job at that. And you can easily change the sizing of that by changing up the edge length. Um, next, I created a volume mesh because we are running a simulation. We are going to need some elements and nodes inside of our part you can show the volume mesh elements here. And lastly, I put it in a FE volume mesh block because we need to use this for simulation. And this pretty much sets us up ready for our for, um, readies our mesh to be used for simulation. So after creating our FE mesh, I like to create my FE model. So in your FE model, it asks for some components and one of the components and in, one of the inputs asks for a mesh. And aside from the mesh, it also asks you for the attributes of your model. So in our case, we are running, we are going to be doing a solid, we are using a solid attribute. So we want to set up a material, which you can use from one of our sample materials, or you can also define your own material by clicking the isotropic material property and then define your own isotropic linear elastic property. And you can fill out your own custom Young's modulus or Poisson's ratio there. In this case, I'm just going to use one of our custom, just use the Lumina 661T6. So with our FE model set up, um, before I actually move on, I just want to let you know that that block um, performs checks to determine whether all objects are restrained properly. So make sure that this model is good to be used for your simulation. Uh, once you have that finished, we move on to our boundary conditions. So I have two boundary conditions over here. I got my force and my supports. So if I open this block up, I used one of the custom blocks where it takes the face of the CAD that I selected. In this case, I had the force faces selected and my support faces selected. And it selects the nodes where it's touching my CAD faces from my mesh. So if I quickly turn that off and turn this on. So where my mesh was, I can also turn on the mesh so you can visually see. So where my nodes are on my mesh, and where my selected faces are, it's going to select all those nodes and it's going to represent, those nodes are going to represent as my force boundaries. And same as the support, if I turn on my support face boundary over here, you can see in the green, it's going to select all the nodes where it touches my cat faces and represent and use, that as, use, those, node, use those boundaries, sorry, as my supports. So I have my force over here and I got my supports over here nice and set up. Now, lastly, I just put all of those into my static analysis block. So that's for an FE model and then my load cases. And once that, com once that is complete, 
I am able to get my simulation result. So now I know that my workflow works. Now, how can I create a custom block out of this? So I wanna create a custom block out of this workflow. Um, before I get into actually creating it, I just wanna let you know that this is probably one of the most powerful tools that, or not tools, but features that we have in Anthropology um, because you literally just take this entire workflow and condense it into one block as I explained earlier and I'll replay the part entire step-by-step -step process by just giving a couple of custom inputs, which we are about to define right about now. So let's break it down little by little. So first, what is our, what does our, what do we want as our output? Um, in this case, we just want to get our simulation result from as our output. So I can easily take that block and just simply put it in the output there. And now we can start deciding what we want as our inputs. So let's start from our volume mesh over here. So what can I do? What can I use as my input to always mesh my part? And I think the first thing that comes up in my mind is probably I want to be able to use any CAD body. So any of the parts that I you saw earlier, that's what I want to input in here. So I can simply just delete that, create a variable out of this, and just move that into my inputs. And now, if now I'm saying any CAD body I put in here, it will run this whole block. It will run, it'll mesh it, it'll remesh the surface, create the volume mesh, and it'll also put change it to a FE volume mesh. And I also want to have a bit more control of my mesh. So I'm gonna take out this edge length over here, make that as a variable. And also I'm gonna bring this variable and use it as my edge length for the volume mesh. A good rule of thumb, or at least for me, I like to keep my edge lengths for my remesh surface and my volume mesh surface the same because it usually gives zero errors, not many errors, sorry, not zero, but not many errors when it comes to meshing and it meshes a lot faster when they're both the same. So with our inputs from our FE mesh done, let's move on to our FE model. So now from here, what do I want to change personally? What is going to change often when I'm, what can I change when I'm using different parts? And I like to say, I would probably want to change the material often. So I can also delete this block, make it empty, make this as a variable. I'm gonna drag this up into the inputs. So that way now one of my inputs, not only is the part going to be the same, I can also vary its material. And moving on to our boundary conditions over here. So the faces that we selected earlier were custom faces that we selected, but we want to be able to add in our own faces. So I can also delete this, use this as my input, drag this up into my inputs. And I'm gonna also change the name of it. So that way I know whatever, what my input is. So in this case, I will have to add my force faces. Whatever my faces is gonna be used as a force boundary, I can put that in here. And I would also probably wanna change my force vector because I don't think my vector is always going to, my forces are always going to be it's going into the same direction. I'm going to set this to zero, zero, zero. So that way I know I have to change this accordingly to what my force vector should be. And the same thing for the supports. I'm going to take out the support faces over here because I know this is also one of the inputs that I'm going to have to use when adding in my faces. So I'm going to change this to support faces. Let me also change this to force vector. Just like that, with a couple of inputs that I want to use, I have now created my custom block. So all you have to do is save this file, which I, I believe I already have it saved here. And I can now open up the second file. I open up my second file and I also isolated the parts that we want to use our custom blocks on in our notebook. And I also took out their faces that we are going to use as our forces and our supports. So to import our custom block, you go to this view imported blocks icon, click import block, and then select the file that you saved your custom block under. In this case, our simplified structural analysis custom block, I already imported it in. And you can just bring up that block and put it in our notebook by searching it. I'm gonna move this down here. And now it's just a matter of inputting our inputs. 
So it's starting with the upper left control arm. I'm going to drag in our CAD body, specify our material. I'm OK with this edge length. I'm going to add in my faces, change our force vector, and add in our support face. And in a matter of a couple of seconds, it's going to run our custom block. And it will spit out our result. I'm going to call in another one while that runs. Bring this down for our lower left control arm. Same thing. Fill out the same inputs, our CAD body, specify our material, bring in our lower face, change our force vector, and lastly, add in our support faces, and I'll run that as well. I already also did it for the other parts over here. Using the same exact custom block that I imported. And just like that, in a matter of maybe like one or two minutes, we were able to run four static analysis on our control arm just by using our custom block. Let's quickly recap what we did today. We created our single loading with support static analysis workflow. We then condensed that workflow into our custom block by defining our inputs and outputs. And then we imported that custom block and ran that block across four different parts. You can make this custom block way more robust if you wanted to. If you wanted to have more control around your mesh, we can create more variables out of it and then use those as our inputs or maybe even define more boundary conditions. There is a lot more you can do and you can do it any way you want it to suit your needs just by simply adding more inputs. I hope you're able to understand how to set up a static analysis and create a custom block out of it to create that reusable workflow. If you're curious about anything at an end topology, set up a few minutes with us and a demo to get your questions answered. Go to endtopology.com, click on get a demo, and simply fill out the form to speak with an end top expert. If you're an existing user and want to dig deeper, feel free to check out support.endtopology.com to access our help center.